Uh, Dave, Isilon, a company that we know a lot about, uh, obviously doing very, very well um, at EMC, but a big success story. You can, you can you know, we'll hear from here. Um, you know, the CEO, Paul, we met last night, Dave, um, great guy. Um, but, you know, they're just, just venture-backed. Um, they're growing. They have some cash in the bank um, in the sense that they're not, not a bootstrap startup. They're the real deal uh, with venture capital. And, uh, you know, they got a good solution. I think the insight that Aaron just said, said was interesting. That, you know, get to the database problem. It's kind of the isolon for databases. Putting the data out, queries out where the data lives. That's kind of a philosophy of kind of the Hadoop model, if you will. Mm -hmm. The MapReduce, et cetera. Um, so, good trend, very relevant. And, uh, you know, in this hot M&A market, they may not last long if they continue to get the traction that they're getting. So, um, I'm not too sure I like the whole new sequel. I think, you know, I was talking to Paul last night, the CEO, uh, new sequel is, a, is a, a term they coined. And whenever you coin a new term, you really got to develop it and you got to invest in that brand. So, you know, it's always hard for a startup to use capital on marketing when you really should be uh, continuing to get product out there and customer traction. So, so it'll be an interesting balance on whether they can, that will stay around. Um, I'm not sure yet, the jury's still out on that um, new sequel concept. So we're here live, Oracle Open World 2011. The big story today, of course, is Mark Benioff, uh, his keynote got canceled, and um, so he had to take it across the street to the St. Regis restaurant. Now, of course, uh, uh, our John Furrier uh, went in to the, to the moved keynote, front row seat, yeah. um, and we were the only ones to have Mark Benioff live on the Cube through Skype. John brought in his laptop and had Mark on, asked him several questions, asked him a great question. Do you think, you know, Facebook, the Facebook CIO was there and you asked Mark, do you, do you think Facebook uses Exadata? Well, I mean, I think, I think uh, Mark Benioff, who was, used to work at Oracle, he, the story around Mark Benioff is that he was the apprentice to the Larry, um, Larry Ellison and then left and start, started Salesforce.com, which people use to, for developing sales and funnels and all that stuff, been around, very successful. Um, and now they're moving into the whole social world, a world of you know, gamers out there, we got social media, and he points about Facebook. He uses Facebook as an example of the kind of company of the future, and that is, yeah, you'll have some Oracle in there, but Oracle will do one thing, one or a few things really well, but you're not going to run your business on Oracle in the sense of the value. And Facebook is, is the company that he's talking about because they do have Oracle uh, software and systems, that, but it runs their accounting, general ledger as they call it. And that's just accounting and makes sure people get paychecks and print out checks, but they don't run their business. And the Facebook application, Dave, does not run on Oracle. It runs on commodity servers, open source software, they use big data analytics with Hadoop and other um, environments, probably buying Clusterx, or they should buy Clusterx. Um, well, so, so that's really the future, and that's not what Oracle's selling. And you Oracle's said selling you know, integrated, proprietary, big iron, lock-in products. And you've referenced several times this week the Mark Andreessen blog where he basically said, look, I run a, a, you know, a portfolio company of companies, and he does, right? The guy's obviously got some chops, and he says none of them use Oracle. Now that is a change from 10 or 15 years ago where you might start a company, you'd go out, buy a big server, buy well, a bunch the, of Oracle licenses. For the people out there that's been around as long as we have in the industry, um, no, but might, if they're younger than us, you might not know that Mark Andreessen was the founder of the browser, essentially, which drove the whole web, World Wide Web. And he knows his stuff, and he was being polite in that blog post, so he's basically saying it in that way, but he's basically thinking a hard line. Mark Andreessen's also on the board of Facebook, he's also on the board of HP, he runs a venture capital firm called Andreessen Horowitz with his friend Ben Horowitz, and those guys see a lot of action, they know what's going on, so for them to take a strike at Oracle, he's got no real agenda, um, I mean, well, other than the fact he's on the HP board, um, to, to put that out there. Um, so, it's interesting. Um, and and the, you know, the story about HP, Dave, is that uh, you know, HP has uh, an interest in this with Oracle as well, and there's a war going on between HP and Oracle, and that's where Mark Andreessen's on the board of HP. That's, that's the, the only issue we can call on that. Yeah, so um, just a quick market check. The market's rebounded nicely today, and um, so uh, we've seen Apple come back. John, you called the low. Uh, not quite the low, but you basically said, hey, this is a buying opportunity. What Apple, Apple? Apple's up nicely now. Uh, Apple's up probably about uh, five today. Let's take a look. Yeah, so Apple, has rebounded really beautifully. It's up almost six points, uh, uh, percentage yeah. and a half. Uh, you can see the lows were down around 
360 when John Furrier said, hey, this is a buying opportunity, it's up to almost well, 380 Well, Apple stock dropped significantly yesterday because of the iPhone 4S announcement. A lot of people were expecting the iPhone 5, Dave, and that was the real, I think the primary interest in the stock drop. They weren't sure if that was a, a, a signal or not, and uh, what happened was people realized that the iPhone 4S really is an upgrade from the 4 in the sense that it's really built from the ground up with dual radios, for GSM and CDMA, it has 1080p video, it has eight megapixel camera, it's got uh, iCloud, which will replace MobileMe on October 12th, and iOS 5, so significant upgrade for the iPhone 4S, um, big, big announcement. And you know, comparing and contrast Apple with Oracle, because we're live in San Francisco right now at Oracle Open World, Oracle's trying to be the Apple of the enterprise. Not sure I would compare the two. Apple's disruptive, they're innovative, Oracle's an incumbent, um, you know, extracting rents out of their existing stall base, not mm -hmm. known for innovation, not even known as a fast follower, according to Jim Lundy, ex-Gartner analyst. So Yeah, there are some similarities, right? They've got hardware and software engineered together and they've got a dynamic uh, CEO, but you know, Apple's all about simplicity. You know, the cloud is all about simplicity and openness and, uh, and you know, even though Apple's not open in a lot of respects, yeah. um, it's simple. And like you said, it's innovative and so Oracle's, very complicated, um, you know, and just doing some of the things that we've done here this week. So we have our next Oracle. guest is Pauline from Intel, okay? Oh, well, Pauline's here, fantastic. Um, do, uh, she didn't, she's do wanna, next? Do, you wanna, do we have time to jump in right now? What's do you want to do a reset and then? Okay, let's do All a right. reset. We're going to do a quick reset and we'll be right back um, with, uh, with Intel. We'll be talking about data center trends and, the, and microprocessor trends. Um, and we'll be back so right, keep we'll, it right there. We'll be back with Pauline Nist from Intel, general manager of the data center group. Uh, been in the industry, she's going to share her insights.